Hello there, I hope you're having a wonderful time. Today in this video, I will share with you some of the tramples, some of the works, some of the jobs, <laughs> some of the struggles, hustles that I engage in when I came here to Brazil. You see, when I came in 2011, I was under the Bauchi State Government Scholarship, Bauchi State of Nigeria. Um, so when I came here, I wasn't bothered about, you know, doing something. I started teaching English. Okay? I didn't just depend on my scholarship. I found an English school within the university, which is NCO. All right. Uh, it's under the Department of uh, Language or Linguistics. And uh, there they train students like any other English schools. And uh, I requested and they permitted me to teach. Somehow I was getting an extra, you know, from that. And later on, I met friends. There was a day I was talking to one of my friends and he told me that his father had a school, an English school. He said, okay, I could talk to his father. You know, I organized talking to his father. I went there, I spoke with him, and uh, he invited me to teach in a school. That was uh, the ending of 2011. But I started teaching fully in 2012. And uh, since then, I, you know, worked in other English schools. I think I worked in about four or five different English schools here in the city of San Luis. But you know, I'm going to tell you uh, not to commit the mistake or to make the mistakes that I made because uh, I was supposed to plan myself. I was earning, you know, some considerable amount of money uh, that I was supposed to plan, you know, save and maybe establish myself. But since I was thinking of going back to Nigeria after finishing my graduate course, I didn't plan anything. Today, if I think of that, I kind of regret, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's not that regret that makes you feel bad. It's it's kind of experience that uh, is worth sharing, okay? So that the younger ones wouldn't make this mistake, okay? So when you are here, I think you should think of um, planning, establishing yourself. If you have the capacity buy an apartment, buy a house, a land, or even an automobile, a machine, a car, have as a property. If you are earning something, it's it's really important that you do that uh, planning. You know, I didn't think of that okay, because I was thinking of finishing and then going back to Nigeria. When I was finishing, things started changing. My mother died at the end of my course. She died a few months to my graduation and that totally changed, you know, how I saw things. I started rethinking and all of a sudden I found myself trying to think of establishing myself in Brazil. I could see so many opportunities of uh, studying in good universities. But at the same time, with Nigeria, somehow at the back of my mind, I could establish myself here and, uh, you know, visiting, doing research, you know, partnership and so on and so forth. Right, but things were a little bit harder because I was finishing, the scholarship was finishing also, so the reality was somehow different, okay? So when I finished, I stayed at home for about eight months, eight months trying to walk. I intensified walking in the English school that I had started walking in 2012, you know, because uh, I needed to earn more, <laughs> right? And eight months gone, I was thinking, well, I can't spend years, you know, waiting. I had to do something. So I tried to go into postgraduate program. That's master's. I sent my application to different universities and uh, I got admitted at the extreme south of Brazil, right? So I moved from the extreme north eastern part of Brazil to the extreme south. I crossed the whole country. But before then, I started trying to get a driver's license so that I could maybe uh, drive one of these apps, you know, stuff like Uber. They have other app like 99. They call it 99 here in Brazil. It's very popular. So I wanted to maybe drive and earn money but on doing that that's my driver's license i couldn't drive because you have one year of probation they call it <laughs> and uber doesn't accept that you need to have a full driver's license and it's only after a year that that is issued okay 
So I went to the South. When I got there uh, to the university, I didn't have scholarship, okay? It was really hard. The first thing I started doing was making flyers, telling people that I was an English teacher. Uh, I started getting students, and uh, before I knew I had, you know, a couple of students, I started earning. Along the line, I also started selling perfumes because uh, when I finished my degree, uh, in those eight months of waiting, you know, to do something, we started selling cosmetics, perfumes, some underwear to aggregate the income that we had, right? So there I said, okay, let me just sell some. But when I established myself as an English teacher, I saw that there wasn't any need to keep selling the perfumes. I left that. Along the line, I started noticing that people were asking me if I could translate, most especially scientific documents like articles, chapters, books, and so on. And I said, well, <laughs> that was a good opportunity. I started, you know, working with that. I did the first translation. I reviewed some, you know, scientific documents. I could earn far better than any other thing I was doing, okay? Although it's not easy, you have this pressure because it's someone's life. Someone has invested in that. So you have to be careful to convey whatever he wants to convey in that document. That was the first year of master's. In the second year, I already had scholarships, so I was just concentrated trying to round up my master's degree. I started my master's in 2017 and rounded it up in 2019. So in 2019, I returned to San Luis. I started looking for something to do. There was a great opportunity to lecture at the university as a substitute teacher, okay, substitute lecturer. But since my degree certificate is still at the embassy, even at this moment of recording, because when you finish your PECG course here in Brazil, they send your degree certificate to your embassy there in your country. I haven't traveled since then to pick it up. It became a problem to me because I was eliminated in the selective process. I started working as a driver. If you could remember, I had applied for license before I left for master's. So the period of one year had already gone. I started driving, you know, in Uber and uh, 99. It was almost a year, you know, trying so many things, translating documents, reviewing articles, teaching English, driving, you know, and selling other stuff. I applied for the doctorate and hopefully I was called. I didn't go directly, you know, through the first list because my curriculum is poor. That's a reason not to make that mistake also. Okay, you have to enrich your curriculum. Try to engage yourself in, you know, scientific activities. Publish articles, participate in events. You know, enrich your curriculum so that if you participate in the selective process for master's and for doctorate, you have high chances of getting vacancies and uh, also getting a, a scholarship. In my own case, I went through the supplementary list. You know, all along, these have been things that I have engaged in doing. So if you come to Brazil, you can work and study at the same time. In case you have a big project like master's, doctorate, and you have scholarship, then you will have to concentrate on that because it's not easy, okay? But in case if you are a superman or superwoman <laughs> from another planet, who knows if you can get you know, all the jobs and do them at the same time. <laughs> it's also possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next.